This company stayed in the family for a hundred years and five generations on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Most of this story today will come from a book written in 1945. James Lewis Prescott was born in New Hampshire in 1828. He apprenticed to become a shoemaker at the age of 16. He got married at 19, and when he was 31, the family moved to Maine, all the while still making shoes. This led him to start manufacturing shoe polish. At age 40, he began selling door-to-door for a company called C.W. Greenleaf & Company. They manufactured Clark's Mirror Stove Polish. He realized pretty quickly that he had a knack for selling. Then, in 1869, life came crashing down on Prescott. First, a day known as Black Friday, which was when the markets crashed and panic spread throughout the nation. Then, a few months later, three of his eight sons, age one, age three, and age six, died within 10 days of each other in an epidemic in December, 1869. Somehow, Prescott picked himself up, and the following year, in 1870, he's 42 now, he bought the Greenleaf Company. He began thinking of a way to improve the product and make it internationally known. James used a little one-story building to come up with his first polish. He called it Prescott Universal Stove Polish. Every home in New England had wood-burning stoves at this time, and the housewives kept it shining with Prescott's stove polish. It came in a bar form, which was called a cake. So women would take the cake of stove polish and mix it with a little vinegar and then quote, it will not take much rubbing to get the stove bright and the blacking will not fly off in dust, unquote. Others advised mixing equal parts kerosene and turpentine with the cake of polish, while others suggested that strong tea work too. Three years later, in 1873, times were still rough and the country was in a bit of a depression. But Prescott's business actually had to add a night shift to keep up with the demands, and in 1875, he bought a bigger place. He also decided to add shoe polish to his product line, since he had so much experience with it. He named his new product PDQ, which stands for Prescott's Double Quick. Ten years after he started, he had 18 employees and had tenfold increase in business. Someone said this about Prescott, quote, He is a man of strict integrity, scrupulously honest, and upright in all his dealings. He has contributed liberally to the needy and benevolent enterprises. He combines the best elements of a citizen. I think we all wish we could leave a legacy like that. Out of nine total children, eight boys and one girl, three of James's sons grew to maturity, all very successful. Amos worked in the business with him. William traveled the world, he was president of three colleges, and someone wrote a whole book about his life. And he's considered one of the most influential educators in Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then there's Charles. He was in the newspaper business, was a bank president, and he ran for governor. Charles also owned the first bicycle in Maine, the first automobile, and put the first street railway in Maine. Interesting. Amos had a knack for sales and tried to improve his dad's stove polish even more. So he came up with a paste polish instead of the hard cake form. It ended up being the first successful paste polish ever and was named enameline, the modern stove polish. Amos also came up with some innovative package designs and advertising. He even took a risky move one year and spent more money on advertising than the business was worth. Here is one of a set of six paper dolls that advertised for enameline and for the boys, baseball player dolls. The risk paid off and the results were amazing. His advertising techniques were learned and used for decades and shaped the development of advertising in America. 
In 1888, now age 60, the originator, James, decided to retire and let his son take over as president. Amos needed more space and moved to a much bigger place, still in North Brunswick, Maine. He partnered with a few other guys and had them be in charge of different territories, from New York City to Chicago to the Pacific Coast. Then he also partnered with guys in England and Germany and put them in charge of those territories. In 1893, Amos had over 200 employees and needed a bigger place again. By 1895, enameline was still the biggest seller, but Amos' new product, Black Yeen, was quickly rivaling for first place. I see my Black Cat Stove Enamel product appear in the market about this time. In 1896, the Passaic, New Jersey plant was opened to keep up with the demand. 27 8th Street, Passaic, New Jersey. It still stands and it still has his name on the building. That's so cool. It was 12 miles from the New York City site and it was sitting right on the dock to get easy, quick shipments. Things really boomed for the company around this time. Overseas, the products were becoming more and more in demand. 3 million feet of lumber was needed annually to build packaging for the products. Amos' son, named James, is now about 25, and Amos put him in charge of the New Jersey plant. Like his dad and his grandpa, James had a knack for business, and he immediately started making improvements, such as labor-saving machinery. Once Amos's five sons were old enough to work, Amos went and bought out all his earlier partners, making the entire company fully run by the family only. All five of Amos's sons worked in the company, eventually taking their places as president, vice president, treasurer, etc. In early 1900s, more products were added, including a now cream polish called Vulcanol. The original creator of the business, James L. Prescott, died in 1915. Shortly after that, in 1920, Amos's son James, the one who was running the New Jersey plant, also died unexpectedly. The post-World War I depression made struggles again for the nation, but the Prescott Company introduced a laundry bluing called Bulldog Blue. It was a new liquid form, which was an improvement over the old types out on the market. They were made of block and bags. This proved to be a popular item and things kept going for the company. In 1926, Amos died in New York, age 73. He was known for helping underprivileged boys. He became the prime mover in the National Child Welfare Association, being its treasurer for years. He also built a school in Maine called Goodwill School. Every time a struggle came, the company introduced a new product. With the stock market crash of 1929, they added a household bleach named Dazzle. By 1945, now 75 years in business, five of the great-grandsons were managing the business, now worth millions of dollars, and the largest stove polish factory in the world. In 1968, the Prescott Company bought Aero Rubber and Plastic Corporation that made toys and dolls. In 1989, a newspaper article from New Jersey had a sad tone while talking to some of the employees of the New Jersey Prescott factory. It was shutting its doors for good, along with the New York factory, and hundreds of factory workers were losing their jobs. It says that the city had been changing directions from an industrial city to more of the way of office type work. J. L. Prescott's great-great-grandson, J. L. Prescott Jr., had been president for 41 years and decided to retire, so he sold the company in 1988 to Set Capital Incorporated of Rhode Island. Naragonset did not anticipate the recent loss of key contracts and faced with an aging plant too costly to modernize, it decided to consolidate its operations and close down many of its factories. I thought it was fitting that the company began with a J.L. Prescott and a little over a hundred years later, five generations later, ended with a J.L. Prescott.
My model is a black cat stove enamel, which I can't find too much information on that specific product. It seems that the bottles were labeled with the factory where it was manufactured, so mine seems to be from the New York, New York plant. It predates the screw top, but it is machine made, so it was probably made between 1900 and 1920. It still has flecks of product in it, a hundred years later. Everyone has a story. I hope you liked this one. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.